Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. In this video, I've got a very important one for you guys. We're going to be talking about the best top 30 plus iOS 15 battery tips and tricks. There are going to be tips and tricks in here that you guys have never heard of from other channels, so definitely stay tuned. You're going to want to make use of every single one of these. Let's get started so that I don't waste you guys' time with number one, and that is to limit your widget use. A lot of people are going to be getting their first iPhones here with this new wave of iPhone 13s and iOS 15 enables widgets. As you guys can see here, I've got a widget for my weather, and this is the only widget that I use. I also use the Apple weather widget, but I just flip between those two. Those are the only widgets I use. No other widgets on my phone. And that is key to saving battery life is to limit your widget use to just a couple that you like, and that's it. If you use a bunch, it's going to drain your battery. Likewise, if you use shortcuts to mask your app icons like a lot of people were doing, that will also drain your battery. The next thing to do is head into settings, scroll down until you see Siri, and, and from here you'll turn off listen for hey Siri. That'll definitely save you a little bit of battery life and you really, it's not that hard to just press the side button when you want to use Siri. Next tip, if you scroll down just a bit, you can turn off these Siri suggestions, only what you need. So I do show in lookup and show when listening, but other than that, I keep all of this off and that is a good way to save some battery life. This next one, this is a big one. So make sure you're paying attention. This is in settings app, scroll down until you see general and then click on background app refresh. I've done multiple videos on this, but make sure this is turned off. You really don't need it. Most no app actually needs this access and all it's doing is refreshing the apps in the background, which just wastes your battery. There is no good reason to keep this on, so definitely turn this off. This does not turn off your notifications. I hear that all the time. My friends ask me, if I turn this off, is it gonna you know, stop an app from giving me notifications? No, you will still get your notifications. This has nothing to do with that. Turn this off. There's a 90% chance you do not need this on, so. I've never had it on. I've used iPhones for what, 10 years now, and I have never used background app refresh ever since it was launched. So yeah, you don't need it. The next tip is a very big one as well. This will drain your battery life very quickly. Scroll down in settings until you see mail, click on that, then click on accounts. And then right here where you see fetch new data, make sure that that is set to manual. I personally keep mine on push, but I'll show you guys why in a second. So as you guys can see, I keep mine on fetch. The only reason it showed push on the other page is because I have an iCloud email attached and I keep that one on push because I never get email, like literally never. So if I ever did get one in the off chance, uh, it would alert me, but keep these on fetch. And then down here you can choose. So I keep mine on fetching every 15 minutes, but you can slow that down if you want it to fetch mail every 30 minutes or hourly or manually when you open the app. Just don't keep it on automatic and don't set it to push and you'll be good to go. Another big one here is to go into settings, of course, click on privacy and click on location services. So in here, there's a bunch of stuff we can change, but the first thing we're gonna change, precise locations. So if I click on air map here, uh, I can choose while using the app, which is exactly what I want. But as you guys can see here, there's precise location. If you have precise location turned on, it is going to use a little bit more battery than it would otherwise. So if something doesn't need your precise location, turn that off and it'll have a general radius of where you're at. Uh, so keep that off on all of these apps that you don't need. And to take that one step further, go through every single one of these apps and set it to never unless you really need it. So I personally set all of my apps to never by default. Uh, I just don't like having them know my location, even my weather app. I manually type in my location. That way it's not draining battery using my GPS chip. So there's a few that I definitely want to use my location. Um, so when shared, while using, stuff like that, none of them ever say always uh, because that's creepy and you definitely don't want that. That's a privacy concern. But you guys can see here, I keep mine on never or while using. The next thing to do while you're still in this, scroll all the way down. And once you get to the bottom, you're gonna see system services right here. Click on that and make sure yours looks similar to mine. So personally, I keep Apple Pay Merchant Identifier on, Cell Network Search off, Compass Calibration on, makes sense, Device Management off because I am not managed by anyone, Emergency Calls and SOS, I keep that on, Find My iPhone, obviously on, HomeKit I don't use, but you might, so you might want that on, Location-Based Alerts and Suggestions, turn those off, those will just kill your battery in the background, and sends your location data to Apple, which you don't want anyway, Motion and Calibration and Distance, I keep that on, Networking and Wireless, I turn that off, even though it has a warning when you try to do that, just I've never had an issue with having that off. Time zone on, location on, system customization off. And then down here, significant locations, I turn that completely off. I've never used it. I recommend you turn it off as well, it's creepy. Your iPhone basically stores everywhere that you go in there and saves it as significant so that it can tell you when to leave your house to go to the doctor or something. I don't need that, so I keep it off. Next up, turn off iPhone analytics, routing and traffic, and just make sure those product improvements are off. 
Those are unneeded and waste valuable battery life by sending that data to Apple, which is also kind of creepy. So the next thing to turn off is sound recognition. So a lot of you guys might not even know that your iPhone comes with this, but you're gonna to wanna to turn it off. So, so go into settings, click accessibility, scroll down to sound recognition and make sure this is turned off. Basically what this does is it listens for certain sounds as you guys can see, and it can alert you. Most of you guys probably don't need this. And again, it just wastes valuable battery life. Why have it? Next up might be one of the biggest killers on this whole list, and that is your notifications. So you need to go into settings and the notifications and scroll down and every single one of these apps you need to go through and make sure you need it. So for example, I have this airline commander app. It's super fun, but I do not need it sending me notifications. If I wanted notifications, I can turn them on and maybe I don't want them on my lock screen or banners, but notification center is fine. You can tweak these, but I personally would turn off anything that you don't need. This will save your phone from buzzing and lighting up and just that in itself will save you so much battery. You don't really notice how many notifications you get throughout the day until you actually sit down and think about it. Uh, you get a lot. So turn off anything you don't need and your battery will thank you. And if you wanna take it one step further, go into screen time. And if you click on see all activity, you can actually see which apps give you the most notifications. So on my phone, Telegram, Discord, Snapchat, they give me 269 notifications per day. That is a ton. So if one of these was not important to me, I would turn that off. If you wanna quickly turn one off, you just click on it and you can access it straight from there. Another thing to turn off is back tap. It was super cool. All the YouTubers were talking about it right when it came out, but if you wanna save some battery life, turn it off. So accessibility under general, scroll down until you see touch. So click on touch and scroll down and you'll see back tap. Make sure that's turned off and you'll be good to go. Now the next tip is actually for Safari. A lot of people use Safari on their phone to browse the web and that is great, but you're going to want to install some sort of ad blocker. You just go to settings and then Safari, and then you'll see right here extensions. And these are my current ad blockers. I recommend either getting Adblock Pro or AdGuard Pro or Lockdown or all three and toggle these all on and they will block so many ads and trackers. Your phone will get less hot when you're browsing the web and you will use less battery life. So definitely use an ad blocker on your phone. So these next two are pretty big. So head into settings first and then click on display and brightness and scroll down until you see auto lock. Make sure this is set to five minutes. If you set it to 30 seconds, your screen's gonna dim all the time and it's super annoying. If you set it to never, if you set your phone down, you could forget about your phone, leave it unlocked, which is a security issue, a privacy issue, and you could risk burn in on your screen if you have an OLED display. So set it to five minutes. That way, if you fall asleep for eight hours, your phone's not gonna be sitting there like this, burning in all of the artifacts on the display. Five minutes is definitely the sweet spot. Another thing to do is once you go back, so you're in settings again, go to accessibility, display and text size, scroll all the way down until you see auto brightness. You're gonna to wanna to toggle this off. This comes with a caveat because if you turn this off, you have to be the one that's responsible enough to turn down your brightness. So during the day, here's how I use my phone. I'm gonna bring this real close so you guys can see. I keep mine just above the first sun ray. During the day, that is how I keep my phone on brightness. I use this indoors mostly, but when I'm outdoors, I might bump it up just a bit. I keep auto brightness always off. I hate auto brightness on my iPhone. For the video, obviously I'm gonna bump it up a bit so you guys can see it, but that's how I keep my phone. If you turn off auto brightness, just manage it and keep it low. So I highly recommend turning that off. All right, next up, I'm gonna give you a tip. Many people don't know this, but the number one killer of your iPhone's battery is heat. That is the ultimate enemy of any lithium ion battery. I'm not gonna go into the way that they work because that would be like a 30 minute lecture, but basically if you get your phone super hot, that can cause permanent irreversible damage to the phone's battery. So if you go to the beach and you set your phone down next to you on the beach towel and you go into the ocean or something and come back 30 minutes later, your phone is going to be scalding hot. This is not good for the phone. This is not good for the battery. So what you need to do is make sure that your phone is out of direct sunlight whenever possible. That includes on your dashboard. If you have a mount on your dashboard, keep it out of direct sunlight. I know from personal experience, putting it up there is going to cause a lot of heat. And when that heat hits the back of your phone, it's going to radiate all throughout the battery, which is very, very bad. And this is permanent damage that you can't undo. So uh, if you ever see a temperature warning on your phone, uh, that's terrible as well. So this will kill the battery life. I'm gonna have other videos going over this as well, so subscribe, that's a big tip. The second part of this, keep your phone out of extreme cold. This usually doesn't cause permanent damage, but if you leave your phone out in the cold, your battery will drain very quickly and you'll start to freak out. 
it might drop from you know 78% down to like 30% in like three minutes. Typically, bringing the phone back into normal 70 degree temperatures, Fahrenheit of course, um, it will recover and your battery will be fine within a couple hours, but just keep that in mind. Avoid extremes, keep it you know in its happy place around 70 degrees and you'll be fine. Another thing, obviously avoid wireless chargers when you can. Uh, some people just enjoy them, so by all means enjoy it. Uh, but if you don't have to use one, don't use a wire instead because wireless chargers emit a lot more heat than wired. Another thing, if you wanna to go to an extreme is to not use your phone while you're charging it. So if you're playing a game and your phone's getting hot and your battery's running low, we've all been there. You just plug in your phone and keep playing. Well, it's charging, it's using the CPU, the GPU. It's gonna kill your battery quicker and also it's going to cause a lot of heat. So in that case, you probably just wanna let your phone cool down, charge up and then continue playing. Now, another one that not a lot of people talk about, if you pull down right here, if you're on an iPhone 11 or 12, and you long press on the Wi-Fi icon, you can turn off airdrop receiving. Keeping this off will save you battery. Not a lot of people know this, but just keep that off until you need it. Uh, and that will save seriously a lot of battery. The next tip is to use Wi-Fi instead of LTE when you can. So if you're at home, obviously stay on Wi-Fi. Your phone's Wi-Fi chip uses a lot less battery than the LTE chip. So you definitely wanna stay on Wi-Fi when you can. However, when you are off of Wi-Fi, turn off the Wi-Fi chip, which means going into here into Wi-Fi and turning it off altogether. This way your Wi-Fi chip is not searching for active networks while you're driving or going through a store because you're not gonna connect to it anyway. So why do you even need to look for it? I'm going to turn mine back on and uh, go back out of here. The other thing is turn off Bluetooth when you're not using it. I keep mine off almost all day, every day, because first of all, I have an RF meter, which can detect radio frequency waves. And this thing is off the charts when this is on, uh, possibly dangerous. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an expert, whatever, but, uh, yeah, I keep this off whenever I can. I might do a whole video on that. If you want to learn more about the radio frequencies given off by iPhones, subscribe. Spoiler alert, AirPods are terrible and I'm kind of worried about that in the future. Anyways, let's back out of that. So keep Bluetooth off. Now I get this question a lot and people say, hey, should I keep low power mode on all the time? And while low power mode is cool, it's really not that useful on a day-to-day -day basis if you're not low on battery. So what it does is it throttles your phone like crazy. Um, so I do not recommend you using this unless A, you know you're not gonna be near a charger. So let's say you're charging up and you're going into the woods with no backup battery for some reason. Uh, okay, fine, keep it on. But in that case, you probably just wanna turn off your phone altogether unless you need it. I only turn this on if I'm at like below 30% and I'm at a friend's house and I know no one has an iPhone charger, which is very rare by the way, or something weird like that, uh, where I know that there's no chance of charging, like at a baseball game or something. Other than that, I keep that off all the time. So I do recommend turning off low power mode and not using it unless you really need it. However, when you do use that, I also recommend turning on airplane mode, maybe keeping Wi-Fi on, and then also turning down your brightness a lot, your battery life will be extended quite a bit. So this next one is hotly debated and it's to swipe away and kill your apps that you're not using. I'm telling you, you should do this. Uh, just kill the ones you're not gonna use. I personally kill all of my apps uh, on a regular because I just do. It's good practice because some apps have been known in the past to continue running in the background as a glitch to harvest location data and stuff like that uh, with background app refresh, which by the way, I told you guys to turn off, so make sure that's off. But yeah, just kill your apps when you're not gonna use them. It's not gonna hurt your battery. Now this next one's pretty important. Use Apple's charging brick and lightning cables when you can. So down here, as you guys can see, this lightning port can get damaged. If you use a bad charger brick or a bad cable, you can permanently damage your battery. So make sure you're using either MFI certified cables and check in Apple's database if it's really MFI certified, because by the way, there's tons of cables on Amazon that are not MFI certified that claim to be. So always look it up on Apple's database or just buy an Apple one and use those just to be safe. All right, now we're gonna get into some technical stuff. So if you wanna be a huge battery nerd and if you ideally wanted to keep your phone at you know the best battery percentage possible, what you would do is you would keep your battery between 40% and 60% at all times. You would never let it get above 60 and never below 40. Obviously, this is not feasible in day-to-day -day life. And plus, that would be annoying as heck. But if you are one of those battery nerds, uh, there's your statistic for the day. If you wanna be like that and uh, try to keep your phone between that, go for it. But remember, your battery is consumable. It's gonna go down eventually and you can always replace it for like 80 bucks. It's not a big deal. I hear something that uh, I don't practice what I preach. So in settings, scroll down to battery, click on that and click on battery health and turn on optimized battery charging. I do not use this because 
I like my phone to charge up to 100% every time I plug it in, no matter what. This feature has gotten better and better. And now if you use it, you'll probably never be caught lacking, meaning uh, where it only charged it up to 80%. I recommend everyone turn that on and then you never really have to worry about your battery. That's like the number one trick right there. Turn that on and uh, you don't have to worry about monitoring. Oh, am I at 40%? Am I at 60%? No, just turn this on, plug in whenever you want, anytime throughout the day. As long as this is on, you're much better off than without it. So keep that on. Uh, that is just a pro tip. The next tip, make sure your apps are updated. So in the app store, uh, just make sure you update all your apps at all times, but make sure everything's up to date. Uh, the other thing, obviously make sure your iOS is up to date. So settings and then general software updates, make sure this is up to date at all times. Do not skip updates. Updates usually include battery life savings. So it's very important to update. Another thing in settings, if you scroll down to battery, you will see here the battery health chart. So you guys can see what my levels were. I keep my phone plugged in as much of the day as I can. Uh, and I unplug it when I obviously need to have it unplugged. So analyze these charts, see what uses a lot of battery and you know, apply changes accordingly. If there's something you don't like what you're seeing, <laughs> delete the app or use it less. Uh, but yeah, check these charts out. They can help you a lot. And then the last thing of this video, uh, because this video has been very long, I've been trying to talk fast, uh, battery health. If it's below 85%, you might need to think about getting a new battery. Below 80%, Apple usually recommends a new battery. So uh, personally for me, I'm taking mine in very soon. I'm getting a new battery. It's like 80 bucks, big deal. The phone will be fresh and the battery will be back at 100% capacity. So uh, that's the only way to get it back up. It only goes down. Uh, so the only way to get it back up is to buy a new battery. So that's all I got for this video, guys. Hopefully you found it helpful. Um, if you did, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Oh, and by the way, I got a lot more of these videos coming with tips and tricks for the iPhone 13. So be sure to subscribe. Peace.